uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm happy to greet you on our third edition, and this time after Americas and uh, Africa uh, regional call for uh, Europe to connect uh, all of the young water professionals and also to share experience and some ideas for, for us in, as young professionals. Uh, my name is Ludmila. Uh, I'm based in Ukraine and I'm a part of uh, uh, Young Water Professionals Steering Committee, in particular working uh, with uh, events and communication and uh, um, together with uh, Shatan Juma, uh, who is from Congo now, also a part of the Steering Committee. We've, we've been uh, organizing this event. Um, let me stop uh, shortly on some um, organizational information. So this event will be recorded and it will be available on demand on uh, the platform called IWA Connect Plus. Uh, we ask speakers uh, and uh, to be responsible for securing copyrights and permissions for any uh, information that, that they present or uh, for which they are not legal copyright holders. And uh, we want to mention that the opinions, hypotheses, conclusions or recommendations contained in the presentations are and other materials are the sole responsibility of the speakers and do not necessarily reflect the IWA opinion. To use chat area uh, for introducing yourself, for posting the questions for our speakers, and also you can share your contacts, uh, social media accounts if you would like to connect. Uh, also, we'll appreciate if you can uh, mute your uh, uh, mute yourself and keep your camera close. Um, uh, in this uh, most likely for the participants <laughs> currently for speakers of course they will be speaking uh, for sure you need to open that and uh, yeah the sh shared uh, uh, slides will be shared uh, just uh, um, from the organized way rather rather like um, separately. Uh, today we will have two panels uh, contained of four speakers uh, in first, uh, representing Spain, um, um, Cyprus, uh, Austria, and Kosovo. And second panel uh, with uh, France, uh, um, Czech Republic, and uh, uh, Denmark. Um, just briefly uh, to speak about IWA community. So we are here to connect, engage, uh, recognize and uh, help to, to have professional development for young people like us under 35 years old who work with different branches of water sector. Uh, IWA uh, YWP steering committee, um, uh, what we represent is a, like a kind of uh, governing um uh, governing uh, body of young water professionals who try to provide some um, recommendations for uh, the secretariat uh, with uh, directions uh, which is maybe um, better to work uh, with young water professionals or will be uh, more interesting for them to be engaged and also we are engaged with uh, young uh, country chapters young water professionals country chapters uh, in um, organizing also different events so uh, being a young water professionals, uh, as we already mentioned, you can be a part of steering committee, you can be a part of country chapter, you can be a part of specialist group and um, uh, part of different conferences or events in the part of uh, uh, participation or uh, even organization. Um, here you can see uh, uh, the map with all of the chapters what we currently have and even though uh, several countries jo joined us within 2023 and I think it's uh, really great to have us spread. Um, just a few words about recent uh, online uh, engagements for chapters. It's, it, it has been like get together, it's regional call, global coordination calls and webinars where we've been collaborating with different chapters and uh, the chapters were also proposing like uh, their own ideas, whatever they uh, may uh, would like to, to work on and to share, share with other audience. Uh, also, we have several platforms uh, like uh, Connect Plus, uh, 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 Microsoft channels for the chapters, uh, uh, different channels on different social medias, and of course, official uh, communication through like emails and uh, websites. 
Uh, and yeah, just to inform you that like very soon, we'll, the nomination for a new steering committee of young water professionals will be open. So keep an eye on that. And uh, we'll be happy to have uh, new people uh, on, the, on the board. And uh, yeah, I think I will stop on this uh, uh, briefly and we'll uh, move to specific uh, experiences from the chapter. So let me introduce uh, our first speaker. Uh, it's uh, Azier Elgozabal. He represents uh, Young Water Professional of Spain chapter. Um, he is representative international relations and sustainability department at uh, this chapter. Also his research analyst at Trucking Innovation focused on the relationship between water, education, governance systems and uh, different industry stakeholders. Um, so, uh, Azir, we'll, we'll be happy to hear from you. The floor is yours. Well, thank you to everyone. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, Patricia Lema, that is my companion, she couldn't come to the, to the meeting. So, I'm here gladly as well. Uh, we we want to talk about the the network of the Spain chapter. As Lyudmila mentioned, I'm in currently in the Department of International Relationships and Sustainability working among all my companions to strengthen the network and to improve the network properly, as we can try. The next slide, please. Uh, Lumila, I, I don't know if, ah, there, thank you. Uh, well, beginning from the bottom, uh, we could talk about the IWA, the IWA, uh, as an international or association or organization that bring all the professionals and organization together to talk about and fight about all the problems and challenges in the water sector. Being the IWA, one of the most uh, constitutions or most influential constitutions in the water sector. Oh, you could go back, please. And from that point on, here in Spain, the IAAAAEIS, the Spanish Association for Water Sanitation, uh, being one of the government members in Spain, promote the creation of the Young Water Professional Chapter in 2015 with the aim and objective of contributing to the present and the future of the water sector here in Spain. Um, from that point on, we, next slide please. From that point on, we start to create collaborations, for a, a different kind of collaboration. At this case, we're gonna, we're gonna talk about the international collaborations. Everything began in 2018 with the first collaboration with the UK and Spain chapters, where we were talking about the water in Spain. It was the fir first event, it was uh, first webinars, so it was one of the, 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 the most iconic for us. After that, in 2021, we continued the international collaborations with the Young Water Professionals chapter of Germany with an online event called the Building Bridges, trying to strengthen the, the both parties as well. And nearby, the, the most recent, it was the, the the recent collaboration. It was in the six Igua Eco STP conference in, here in Girona, Spain, in 2023, where we collaborate as a co-chair with the Italy, with Italy, Denmark, and Spain as well as a co-chairs of the of the event. Um, the next slide, the next slide, please. And at the same time, we are trying to reach different kind of collaborations. Uh, for example, in the Spanish language, we discovered that we need to find out uh, more, we need to develop uh, more content and find out new solutions for the sector as well, because we have pretty amazing content and solutions and technologies and research in, in English, but in Spain, we need to develop uh, more content for that as well. Uh, we started the initiative of Ibero-American chapter webinars uh, last year as well, in 2023 where we bring all, all the Latin American uh, chapters as well to, to talk about different uh, subjects related to the water sector. Uh, we began in March with the first webinar. It was called, it was, it, the subject was Women's Empowerment in the Water Sector, and which is quite, quite amazing because it was the first one as well. After that, in June, we continue with the methodologies for efficiency in water and water distribution networks. And we closed the last year in November, sorry about the day, uh, with the present and future situation of water footprint. In all these webinars, we try to, to reach different experience, different hosts that bring their solutions and their situation of their realities that might help in different realities. For example, 
a solution that we apply in Spain could, could work in Mexico and solutions from Mexico could work in Argentina, from Argentina to Ecuador, Bolivia, Colombia. So we're trying to create a network, uh, no new people, new solutions and incentivate this kind of initiatives. Uh, the next slide, please. Yes, uh, Lunila, I don't know if, uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, from this point, we for future collaborations, we're trying to create more Ibero-American webinars for this year, activities, any kind of activities that might help to bring us together, national and international collaborations as, as well. So we're happy to hear options, proposals, anything that we might uh, help or be part of. And the main event, as we know, of this year is the European Young Water Professional Conference in June, at mid-June. So we're pretty excited to be part of and to, to help to be involved in this, in, in this conference. And the next slide, please. And in the middle of all these activities, what kind of activities we do, the little activities that bring us together to know each other, to create new opportunities, synergies, we always try to create the networking about uh, sport events, water meetings, we bring all the, the young water professionals together, divulgation and awareness of different events uh, nearby the, the main uh, cities, for example, Madrid, Valencia, Bilbao, Barcelona, and, uh, and at the same time, international participation, we, we could learn about different realities and perspective. And as I said, ne networking and collaboration could be easier at happy hour after office, uh, go to hike into the mountain with a group of people, everything that could might help uh, to bring all, all of us together, know each other, and know about the sector and um, empower the young water professionals. The next slide, please. Uh, closing the last year, that was the main event here in Spain, we have the opportunity to create and develop the first hackathon that it was called a uh, young water hack. Where we were talking about the sustainable water use as a key element against the, the, the uh, in the fight against the climate crisis. In this case, uh, we try to we propose three challenges for doctoral, master degrees, and professional formation students, where we have participation of all of almost 50 people, dividing in smaller uh, working groups to create different solutions for the water sector. That at the end of the event, the solutions were quite innovative and interesting because it, it is completely different that we know from the enterprises, organizations of our academic uh, sector because. They have the wide open tools and know uh, of, of their of their node of different uh, doctoral master experience. So the, the result was quite amazing. But the best result it was that we created networking between students, young water professionals, the sponsors, and the stakeholders. So the, the great outcome was the strength of the network as well and the empower of the of the new new young water professionals. Uh, the next slide, please. And giving a little uh, rewind about the last main conference that we have, we started in 2017 in Bilbao with the first uh, Young Water Professional Conference. After that, we continue in 2019 in Madrid with the second Young Water Professional Conference. And the most recent, it was in Valencia in 2022, that it was quite good because it was the relaunch after all the pandemic situation where we all been together, uh, reconnect and uh, move forward with the next chapter of the of the network. And the next slide, please. And the main event here in Spain that it will be in October it is the this, this year Young Water Professional Conference that it will be in Bilbao. We're getting there. We are organizing and preparing everything. So we're completely welcome to assist, to be part of this event. And um, we're completely free to uh, hear new ideas, to collaborate. So. Above all, the, the next slide, please. Thank you for your attention. And we're completely open-minded uh, about anything, any idea that we might help or we, we could hear. Uh, thank you for the opportunity and the, or your time to be part of this, this uh, reunion, reunion call. Thank you, Adier, for sharing the Spanish experience. And we will move to our uh, next speaker, uh, Maria Cristofi. She's um, a vice chair of IWA Cyprus chapter and also a water systems engineer in the British Forces uh, Cyprus working with CMC GWE. Uh, she, her focus 
is uh, more to on updating and, and keeping of various water infrastructures, including the reservoirs, aquifers management, reverse osmosis process, and uh, water treatment, wastewater treatment plants. So, uh, Maria, please, you, the floor is yours. Hello, thank you for the introduction. Um, so, um, thank you for the opportunity also. Today, I would like to tell you that we will be speaking in regards to the Cyprus Young Water Professionals, the organizational journey and uh, how that has progressed in Cyprus. What we will be looking at is uh, how we operate the research activities, field activities, online activities, and any reach out activities we have had until now. Uh, I will be going through the uh, young water prof um, can you please go back a slide? So I will be looking at the young water professional Cyprus activities in 2023, future activities along with challenges and evaluating uh, the opportunities or that we've had with the IWA. So um, unfortunately, I apologize for the uh, slides. It's not what we initially intended to present. However, Due to some technical difficulties, uh, you won't be seeing many slides from us today, but I will be talking mostly. So in terms of the activities we've had in uh, 2023, uh, some that we did undertake was the a visit, site visit at the wastewater treatment plant in Larnaca at the sewage and drainage board. We also had a publication of an article with the name of Water Supply, Groundwater Overexploitation and Water Resources Management in Cyprus, which was written by one of our members. We also had a unique opportunity to participate at the European Researchers Night in our capital in Nicosia. And the theme that we presented was exploring the secrets of clean water it was very interesting and some of the team members were able to present um, how water is filtered and cleaned and it was presented to young children. The main aim was to increase um, excitement from the young age with the aim of more people wanting to become young water professionals in their careers. And uh, we also, uh, participated at the sixth general assembly of the Cyprus Water Association, where we also presented our progress and how we have um, uh, what we have achieved within the year. Uh, what's more, we've also had activities in collaboration with the International Water Association with the young water professionals, and uh, we have contributed to the. Uh, IWA YWP newslet newsletter. And we've also had the opportunity to participate in various uh, online workshops and regional calls. Um, this year, for the year of 2024, we have uh, hopes to organize two more site visits, specifically the Arhangelos uh, Dam, so it's a new construction in Cyprus where we are aiming to take young engineers or prospective engineers within the water sector that would like to learn more and um, em enlarge in their um, knowledge basis. We've also, we are also planning to visit a desalination plant in Bafos and um, some uh, flood measures that have taken place, specifically the installation of gabions within the British forces. Um, we uh, were also hoping to undertake some national conferences uh, within Cyprus, which will be hopefully uh, all of the members of the IWA Young Water Professionals will be invited regarding climate change, desalination, water quality and drinking networks, uh, reduction of non-revenue water. Uh, we would also like to do an in-house workshop regarding pumps for water and wastewater networks, along with some other articles and interview of key people within the water sectors of Cyprus. Um, if you could change the slide, please. So 
The main aim of what we are trying to do and how we're trying to organize our, our chapter is uh, through having the opportunity for younger people to be able to network with seniors related to the water sector in Cyprus. Um, we are able to um, use them as mentors and uh, they are able to guide us. We are able to learn from their mistakes and get an insight of uh, any previous and current situations relating to uh, water related topics in Cyprus and any difficulties they have encountered. And uh, we're also lucky enough that our members are exposed to all factors of the water related sector. And um, we are able to have a large phasm of activity. So that allows people to become more familiar with with the uh, aspects that they may have not used or be familiar with from their careers or their education until now. Uh, if you could change our slide, please. Nonetheless, uh, we do have difficulties as well and challenges within the chapter. Unfortunately, we are a very small chapter and we, being a small chapter suggests that we do not have a budget a, a big enough budget for international activities, such as participating at conferences hosted by the Young Water Professionals, by IWA. Um, the water sector is also not that popular in Cyprus. It's a very niche environment. So it is difficulty, uh, difficult to build a professional career in the water sector. Um, furthermore, um, local interest can be very limited and this may be a challenge for us but uh, in terms of attracting and retaining new members within uh, the organization and uh, also garnering support for various chapter initiatives. We are a bit concerned about our long-term sustainability of the chapter um, and uh, member fluctuation. However, we are hopeful that our own connections, as well as connections with the uh, local universities, will allow people to become more interested and join the chapter. However, it is one of our concerns. Um, slide, please. Nonetheless, even though there are challenges, we are grateful of being part of the International Water Association chapter of the Young Water Professionals, um, because it provides a lot of advantages uh, which is participating in regional calls and allowing us to expand our horizons and see um, possibilities that we may have not used in Cyprus. Furthermore, it's a networking opportunity to meet all of you lovely people. And um, we may also have the opportunity to attract uh, people with new methods that are used in different chapters. And, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, we are hoping to access resources provided by the International Water Association and, and enhance the visibility of individuals and organizations within the water community of Cyprus, provide training opportunities via workshops and seminars to expand our horizons. The only thing which we can say is a disadvantage is that we would like um, to increase our uh, to increase having support uh, for uh, in terms of participation from the other IWA chapters, and um, we're hoping this is an open invitation that whenever we do host any, please come join us, and uh, we are more than happy to learn from you as well as maybe tell you how we work and how our environment works as well. Um, I would like to thank you for your time. I don't believe there's any more slides. Please come connect with us. You can, if you, if you uh, Google um, the Cypress Water Association, you will find a website which has an affiliation link towards us, the Cyprus, the Cyprus Young Water Professionals. Uh, we've also got a Facebook account, a LinkedIn, and a LinkedIn account. And of course, 
you can also find us in IWA Connect Plus. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Maria, for sharing your achievements and uh, challenges. And also, I would uh, confirm that collaboration is a key to like getting some new experience, new knowledge, and skills. So I'm also. Uh, uh, I think it will be great if uh, there will be more collaboration within European chapters and also within all continents. And we will be moving to our next um, speaker from Austria. It's Igor uh, Lukatina. He's an environmental and civil engineer with a degree from uh, Boku University in Vienna. He also specializing in technological innovation at the intersection of water, energy and nature-based solutions. Um, he leads the solar desalination greenhouse project at Alchemia Nova and founded Cosmotikes. I think uh, Igor will share more and more about himself and the chapter. Well, thank you, Ludmila. Uh, the introduction was quite good. So I am entrepreneurially active here in Vienna. I founded my own startup and as a researcher and developer in, in a company. Um, as you can see, Vienna, this the background is actually Vienna. We have our hubs, our technological advancements um, are on a quite high level. So uh, if you are looking for some exchange in sort of a professional level and a research level, um, let us know. In the end, I will show you how you can get in contact with us. You can switch to the next one. So it's quite a contrary picture to the picture before. Um, I'm showing this to you because we went, this is a project basically in Tyrol, in the middle of the Alps of Austria, where we are building a pump uh, energy storage facility. Basically, it's a dam uh, where, we, where the Austrian government for the Green Deal plan is using the dam to, to hold back water and generate it by either uh, running it through turbines or saving the energy by pumping it up. It's a quite common thing to do in Austria, uh, but what is not common about this one is the size of this project. This is basically a rendering and the construction is happening. Ludmila, on the next slide, we can see the construction. And as young water professionals, we couldn't miss the chance to get an impression of what's really going on there and the size and the logistics and everything that's going in the back process, but also on the front. Um, it's my second favorite uh, trip because only because I wasn't there, so I couldn't go there. I, I wasn't in Austria and everybody else was quite impressed. Um, once it is finished, it can generate more than 100 megawatt uh, by turbines and also the pumps are a little bit over 100 megawatt so it's it's a rather controversial project if you're into it read about it um, it is the biggest earth moving project in Europe up to now so just to know the scales from from our side from the young water professionals um, these are actual numbers we are about 80 members which roughly you can say 20 of us approximately uh, 15 depends on what activity we do are really active so we meet we meet up each every every month at least uh, and besides our activities we always count about 10 people that are that are very active the core team is the picture there uh, without the dog the dog is not very proactive and from the presidium we are two women and two men uh, having sort of an equilibrium there most of us are based in Vienna. We have one um, presidium member, Martin. He's from Tyrol, where we went to the excursion, which is sometimes difficult to coordinate. But um, we are happy to have him, as he's from a part that is underrepresented in Austria, from the from the young water professional side. And we are figuring it out how to, you know, engage the other side, the western side of uh, Austria, with us. Please, let's see the next slide. All right, so this is basically an overview of what we usually do, and especially 2023, the year that passed. Uh, the first one, Stammtisch and Punsch trinken. So this is um, our way of, of get-togethers. It's a quite traditional form. Stammtisch means we get together every month on a table that we reserve, 
And this is a traditional way of exchanging. A lot of things in Austria happen on a Stammtisch, like political discussions and stuff. So we kind of like to keep it traditional. And Punsch drinking is mulled wine that happens around Christmas every time, every year. Uh, what we enjoyed this time was the Club Eva. Basically, it was the get-together from the International Water Association of Austria. Also happens once a year. And we led quite some topics there. We did a survey on how, how the work environment is for young water professionals. And also asked the, the older generations what they think about it. And also we had a discussion around on a politically, let's say, hot topic from the EU reuse uh, um, policy that Austria opted out. So we were curious why, and we did a discussion round with more tables, we organized that and had a very, very nice exchange because we can ask bold questions. We can go in with a curious mindset and all the generations, they are from, they have a lot of experience, but they are very, um, I would say like very open and very easy to work with. So we enjoyed that club quite quite a lot. Also, the uh, World Congress was here. Mm, we participated there. And other field trips where we did usually go to water treatment plants, because such things as in Cyprus, desalination plants, we don't have them. Um, but what we do work in Austria a lot are also nature-based solutions. And this is something that we are looking forward to participate to more. Yeah, that's 2023. Yeah, this is our lovely little website. Um, it's It does the job. So basically, you can contact us from there. Uh, I also wanted to show on the next slide our head of the International Water Association of Austria. These are the ones that were participating. There was a club, many more. But I just want to show you. So next time, maybe you're somewhere, you know the faces and you know they're from Austria. Very easy to 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 talk to, uh, very open. And I enjoy also working with them. On the next slide, um, this is, a, again, how you can reach out to us um, um, and why you should reach out to us. If you go on the next slide, Lyudmila, um, we are also... Um, preparing or how, how would I put best we have a whole mentoring program for our Austrian members basically where they can choose from a pool of experts and we match them when they want to start to engage in a different professional career or they need some support they want to grow personally or just as a new step towards a professional more professional manner of working inside of the water sector. And I think it would be also something as we are here in this international call to have you, if you need some sort of assistance, we can also mm, talk to the mentors, talk to somebody who would be able to assist you in some sort of exchange if you are looking towards coming to Austria and, and working here as a professional, be it on a university level, or also just uh, as a in a in a company, um, us from the young water professionals, me especially, I can help you if you need something to sort out with the visa. I know we are mainly Europeans here, so that won't be an issue. But if you know somebody, um, visa can be very difficult and struggling to get, and just take advantage of of our network basically. And if you really want to go deep into it, we might talk about some mentoring program. Us, for example, I enjoyed the mentoring program. Um, I heard that other people also enjoyed it a lot. And it's an easy way to connect with another more experienced generation above us. Yeah, I think that's more or less it. This is us, us four. And um, thank you for your attention. Just reach out to me or young water professionals in general, these are the emails. And yeah, let's have an open discussion, whatever you need. Yes, Igor, thank you very much for your presentation as well. I believe mentorship is also quite important for young professionals. And yeah, that that you are sharing this opportunity for other people, even outside of Europe, that's really great. And I believe some people who are on the call should uh, 
should should uh, contact you and use this opportunity. Yes, thank you. Uh, now we are moving to our next speaker. Uh, it will be Vler Krasniki from Young Water Professionals Kosovo. Uh, she's an environmental engineer working as a teaching assistant at the Faculty of Civil Engineering, University of Pristina, Hassan Pristina, with a background in environmental management systems, impact assessment, and water resources management. Um, yes, I think uh, maybe uh, Vler uh, uh, will uh, speak up about mm -hmm. all of her activities more. Yes, thank you very much, Mila. Uh, hi, everyone. Today, I just want to give you an overview of our chapters so that you can see the challenges we face, the activities we've undertaken, and the plans we have for the future. If we could move ahead. So while as a chapter, we are relatively new to IWA, we only joined last year. However, we've been established for about 10 years now, since 2013. And we first started under the umbrella of the Association of water and wastewater works here in uh, Kosovo. And currently we number 43 members, as I believe all other young water professional um, chapters in the whole world, we aim to empower and mobilize and build skills, share knowledge and expertise um, among our own members, young water professionals in Kosovo, but also uh, to any other stakeholders that are relevant in the water and environmental sector. And as this uh, is a very challenging time for our country when it comes to the water sector, if you can move to the next slide, please. It is a very challenging time. We have we are facing challenges in infrastructure, water infrastructure. We have a lot of physical water stress and, of course, mismanagement, uh, mismanagement of water resources, with our biggest issue being the brain drain, what we call the massive um, migration of youth and young water professionals to other countries. It is a very vital time for the young water professional chapters to be very active in the community. So I want to show you some of the achievements and activities and some of our day-to-day -day work. So far, um, there is the program, the Integrated Water Resource Management uh, Program in Kosovo. It's a 12-year program uh, funded by the Swiss Development and Cooperation Office here, and it has multiple components. It has the academic component and industry and the NGOs. And of course, the youth empowerment and all of that and the young water professionals are a part of that program. So with a lot of support from uh, from the Swiss office and the Scott Consulting, we've managed to secure a few grants so that we can develop different projects that are very, very useful for the water sector. One of those being uh, the web application we've developed. We and by we, I mean, we as young water professionals chapter. And this web application is going to be used for monitoring and managing water resources and is going to be exclusively used by the, the country's regional water companies and overseen by the uh, water regula regulatory office here. In addition to that, uh, our chapter is quite active in disseminating information and, of course, raising awareness of the, of the water and the environmental sector because I I believe and we believe that this is a very, very sensitive thing. It's a very important thing uh, in Kosovo right now. So we have two fun little activities. Uh, the first one is the Fun Fact Friday, where every Friday our team uh, puts out, and whether through social media or newsletters, different water-related facts, a lot of them related to Kosovo, but it's not, um, it's not just for our country, it's for the uh, over, overall world. And of course, the next one is Water Wednesday where we explore different insights into water management and, conversation and conservation in Kosovo, including legislations and regulations and all of that. And in addition to all of this, um, next slide, please. We've also partnered up with uh, engineering specifically, and we offer different pieces of training for our members, but also for other people. We host activities for the World Water Day celebrations, workshops, and uh, open lectures where we invite keynote speakers from all over the world to give very important information, not just to our members, but also to students and to a wider network of, of stakeholders. And all of this is made possible through our multiple partnerships and uh, collaborations that we have. And some of these we will see in the next slide. One of those is actually with the Young Water um, Professionals chapter in Czech Republic. We have a memorandum of understanding with them, and we had a chance uh, earlier last year to have a visit. In, in Prague at the wastewater treatment plants, supported, of course, by the Integrated Water Resource Management Program here in Kosovo. Um, similarly to that, we have a partnership with the Young Water Professionals chapter in North Macedonia, 
And we've also had a chance to hold a workshop there to, sh to exchange our experience on how to make our chapter bigger or how to make it more um, stable and sustainable and all of that. And of course, we have agreements with universities in Kosovo, with uh, water utilities in the country, in the region, and even beyond. These are two of the very, very most important activities we've, we've held. The first one is the Balkans Joint Conference. It's organized every year as a joint conference conference between Albania and Kosovo, and the young water professionals are, are always very active in organizing and participating in it. Last year and the year before that, we had the chance to also host a forum that was specifically for the young water professionals as part of the conference, so that we can showcase the challenges that, uh, that we face in the water and sewer services, the absence of the newer generations, and of course, emphasizing our needs for innovative solutions, and of course, guidance of, of young professionals. And the second one was the participation in the 2023 Danube Water Conference uh, held in Vienna. It was a collection of 150 representatives from the Danube water, uh, region's water sector to address current and emerging challenges. And we had uh, the pleasure of hosting nine young water professionals, members from Kosovo, actively engaged in panels. And we had a chance to present, of course, our activities, our needs, and the challenges, and to get feedback from all of those representatives that were there. Next slide, please. And as I said, we are relatively new to IWA, but we've already uh, seen benefits of being part of this. And one of those benefits would be a call, such as the one today. Uh, we get to have more collaboration with different chapters. We get to meet other people from different chapters, of course, gain a lot of experience. Um, and I believe it, it's a good foundation so that we can develop further on professionally and personally, and of course, create a very sustainable um, environment. And further on, uh, as, as the future, future goals or future steps of our uh, chapter, if you could go to the next slide, please. We already hold several, have held several workshops and seminars. Of course, we are applying for grants, we are networking. And the, whole, the aim of all of this is to equip our young water professionals with skills, with tools and knowledge so that they can achieve as much as they can professionally in the field. But not only that, so they, they can also contribute as much as possible to the water sector, which is in dire need currently um, dur during this time in Kosovo. And of course, the first, uh, first steps of that have begun but we also aim to, to establish a water sector information platform because currently we are in, in a lot of need for information for, for um, awareness raising. We want to increase capacities so that we can gain more members or of even more diverse backgrounds. And of course, um, increase the number of cooperation agreements with companies, with institutions, with other chapters, with higher education in, um, institutions, and of course, um, apply for more grants and projects and other developments. And I believe uh, as young water professionals, and I think this is true for all the chapters, we bring a lot to the table. There's a lot we have to give, but we also need a lot of guidance. And I believe if all the chapters cooperate, um, we could definitely provide a very, very useful skill set and a lot of useful knowledge that could benefit even generations further to come. Thank you very much for your attention. Uh, thank you, Blair. I think being a young chapter you guys are pretty much productive and uh yeah very much things you have to share so yeah thank you for that uh and i would like to encourage uh, participants to share their questions in the chat box and maybe um uh, the speakers can try to uh, respond also because we we a bit um moving uh, let's say <laughs> slowlier so maybe we can secure some time in the end for, for more questions but uh, meanwhile I would like to ask if you guys can respond some questions in the chat mm. and we will be moving to the next speaker um, from uh, France I'm happy to uh, introduce uh, Catalina Suarez she's a PhD student at the University of Pau and the Adore region uh, she's working in collaboration with uh, Total Energies. Her research focus uh, uh, is on microplastic contamination uh, related to the anaerobic digestion processes of biomass, bio waste. Um, Kathleen, uh, we're happy to uh, thank you. Yes, thank you so much for having us. So um, next slide, please. So I'm here to represent the newly created uh, Young Water Professional Chapter in France. Uh, similar to the Spanish chapter, um, the French chapter um, is part of a French association called the ASTIC. 
uh, which is the French Association of Water and Waste Professionals. Um, the chapter is, like I said, in new. So the first contact was in uh, June, July of 2022. We uh, had a first meeting in September of 2022. And finally, the creation of the chapter was last year in July. And we uh, expect to hold our first web webinar in um, February of 2024. Uh, next slide, please. So our uh, chapter is composed of uh, 11 members currently. We have uh, parity in, in men and women. Our 11 members work in different waste man in the waste management and water sector in uh, both public research and uh, private companies. If you are interested in knowing more about our members, uh, you can follow the QR code that you see in the slide. Uh, next slide, please. So our main um, our main um, hope is to contribute to the national uh, water and waste agenda in France, which is which is already very rich. As many of you might know, there are many renowned French research centers such as NRAI and world leading companies in the water sector sector, as Veolian says. There is also the existence, the existence of the of the French Association of Water and Waste Management Professionals, and um, there is a very developed waste uh, water and waste sector. However, under this context, uh, we considered that there there is a challenge in identifying and discussing um, the opportunities in the sector. There is a need of uh, bringing the industry, academia, and decision makers uh, closer together. And um, we also need to foster working experience, experiences and to share the knowledge between all of these different, um, sect, um, all of these different uh, participants in the waste, waste and water sector in France. So um, our objectives and activities are, are um, considered in two main topics. The first one is a professional network where we aim to uh, create networking, mentorship, and um, to share uh, job opportunities. And the second topic would be technical skills, um, where we would share knowledge around the technical, um, the technical um, uh, areas of, of water management, uh, the transdisciplinarity in water and waste, uh, waste, the waste sectors and to create this interaction between the industry and, acad and academia. Um, next. Okay. So um, these objectives will, we aim to um, achieve them by uh, national networking events, by proposing workshops, both in the national and international congresses as part of the IWA, but also as part of the ASTI um, Association. Next. Um, Thank you. Uh, also to um, share results and technical feedback in webinars, to organize mentorship programs with uh, senior professionals, and what we obviously relay in all the EU events such as this one, um, both in the French national level and um, international level, and we also aim to contribute to the EU and to the SD newsletter. Uh, next slide, please. So, um, slide before, thank you. So um, as a new chapter, we don't have much to present concerning our experience, but uh, 2024 will be our first uh, complete year. And we hope to start with our events. Um, the first event is the ASTIC Congress that will take place in June of 2024, where we have a kickoff uh, workshop where we are going to talk about the international cooperation in the field of water management and what uh, the young water professionals role is in this sector. Uh, the second um, activity would be uh, the young water professional European Congress that will take uh, part in, in Denmark and where some of our members will be present. And uh, we are preparing our first webinar, which we hope to be uh, hosting in February, uh, around February or March of this year. So yes, that's the, the, the end of our presentation. If you have any questions or mostly feedback, advice, or anything we, we take them, 
I will leave in the chat our email and our contact information. We would love to col collaborate with uh, other European and also international chapters. And well, as a new, uh, as a new uh, Young Water Professional chapter, it's very important for us to uh, start with uh, our connections and to collaborate and learn from your experiences. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Catalina. Uh, and uh, yeah, you started really great initiatives and I'm wishing you good luck with all of those. Um, we'll be moving to our next speaker. It will be Young Water Professional, specifically Vice Chair Chairman of Young Water Professionals of Czech Republic, Jakub Sohor. Uh, he's also uh, professionally focused on small water supply systems uh, and their safety and supporting the education of new water professionals. Um, Jakub, you're welcome to share the experience of uh, uh, Young Water Professionals Czech Republic. Uh, thanks for introducing me. Uh, hi all, uh, I wish you a nice uh, afternoon. Uh, as it was said, uh, my name is uh, Jakub Sohor and I want to introduce you briefly uh, the challenges and the opportunities which we have as a, a members of Young Water Professionals of the Czech Republic. So uh, please, next slide. Uh, just briefly about the our uh, chapter, uh, we was founded uh, in 2015-2016. In 2015, we have the first idea of founding uh, this chapter, and uh, year after, in 2016, uh, we established it uh, officially. And in 2019, which means that we have a five-year anniversary uh, this year, uh, we was uh, we were officially recognized by the International Water Association. Uh, at this time, we have roughly sixty members, uh, thanks to a very good uh, social media impact in last a couple of months. Uh, we have a increase of members from let's say fifty uh, to sixty, and uh, nowadays we have a steering committee. Uh, with a five member uh, of this steering uh, committee. Our biggest uh, project or event which we organize, uh, so that is a conference uh, which is called Mlada Voda Grzechy Mele, which means in Czech, uh, Young Waters Run Deep, and it is really a conference for a Czech, uh, not only for a young water professionals, but for a young people uh, in a water sector overall. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, and uh, in this slide, I uh, would like to uh, tell you something about the biggest challenge which we have, not only as a young water professional Czech Republic, but even as a Czech water sector, um, because uh, there is a lack of attractiveness of, a of our water sector. Uh, there is aging the workforce in the water sector. Uh, we have a less interest in uh, studying the water sector. Um, study programs, that means that uh, year by year, the amount of the students are uh, decreasing. Uh, and the other problem is that uh, because of the privatization of the water sector, uh, we have really atomization of the water management infrastructure, which means that we uh, nowadays we have uh, 7,000 of water supply system in the Czech Republic. Uh, which uh, don't discuss uh, each other the, the problems. So that means that in the Czech Republic, we have lack of qualified personnel and we as a young water professionals uh, try to make the situation better and increase the amount of the students of the water sector study programs. Uh, so uh, on the next slide, please, uh, we have the first uh, solution, let's say, or not the solution, but uh, something we can do, uh, which is the questionnaire, uh, which was done uh, in the beginning of the 2023. Uh, so we done the online questionnaire with 105 respondents, which means twi twice as much as we have members of our uh, chapter. And uh, there were questions about the motivation of to study water sector, uh, work benefits, opinions on current topics, uh, as the new laws from the uh, new laws from the uh, European Union, and so on and so on. And we try to 
make some summary uh, to uh, give the, uh, it to the companies uh, to know uh, what should have been the uh, great uh, parameters for the job for the young people. Uh, so, for example, uh, there were results that the main motivation to study the water is that it's an interesting uh, study program or interesting studies and they want to protect the nature. On the other hand, the salary was completely uh, uninteresting, let's say. Uh, it's not uh, the reason to study the study programs uh, for the water. Uh, for the water sector, and uh, now nowadays we are trying to expand this questionnaire to the other companies. Like we uh, will try to expand the to the uh, Germany, Austria, maybe uh, Slovakia, and so on uh, to see uh, what is the differences between the Czech student of the water sector and the German or the Austrian. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, then uh, we have some uh, trainings for the students, for example, for the international students of a team's program, uh, we had the water safety plan training uh, for the IMATEC students and for uh, participants of a Czech water conference. We have the workshop about the sustainability and the carbon footprint, and uh, which was the, I think, the best for the making the water sector more attractive uh, was uh, when we go for the first and the second uh, year students uh, year uh, to the University of Chemical Technology and we had the discussion with the students about the content of the jobs of the individual po positions of the water sector because the students don't know uh, what are they going to do with the uh, for example, the master's degree uh, of the water sector. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, the second, uh, let's say, solution is a national cooperation uh, with the Czech Water Association, which is the part of the International Water Association. So we uh, had some uh, uh, some presentation on water work Thursday. We try to do uh, regularly uh, the face-to-face -face network meetings every quarter of a year. Uh, we had the, some ads on a student scientific conference and also uh, we have uh, some cooperation on the organization of BNL Water Conference of the Czech Water Association, which is the biggest conference and event uh, in the Czech Republic. Uh, and the last slide, please. And I have also uh, to mention the international cooperation, both of the cooperation was mentioned here uh, before because first is the Danube Water Conference uh, where uh, we can be the co-moderators of the discussions and sessions. And uh, of course, international cooperation with uh, Kosovo Young Water Professionals uh, signing the memorandum of uh, cooperation and understanding. And uh, I hope that this international cooperation will be developed uh, after uh, because uh, uh, one of our steering committee members was on a conference in Kosovo uh, this month. So I think that it's a very promising cooperation and uh, we are very glad that we can have these international cooperations and I hope that uh, it could be developed also with other chapters of uh, uh, young water professionals. So uh, if somebody here uh, wants to brainstorm some cooperations, uh, we will be glad to discuss it. Uh, so uh, thank you, uh, please, only the uh, very last slide, which is only uh, the photos of the uh, Young Water Professionals members from the Biennial Water Conference. And uh, thank you for your time and, and your attention. And I will be glad if we can brainstorm some, uh, some possibility to have uh, international cooperation with the other young water professionals chapter. So thank you. Um, thank you, Jakub. I would like also to add that uh, attractiveness of water sector is not only challenge of Czech Republic. I would find it like in different countries, in particular in Eastern Europe, 
right uh, in, in Ukraine as well. It's a bit an issue, but uh, we are the ones who are currently uh, representing the sector, so we uh, we will try to make it more attractive, right? <laughs> uh, okay, now we will be moving to our last but not least uh, speaker. Um, Nerea Uri Karenio. I'm happy to um, uh, introduce uh, our chair of young water professionals from Denmark. She also holds a PhD in biochemistry by DTU Copenhagen and works as innovation specialist at the Danish water utility uh, VCS Denmark. Uh, Nerea, uh, I hope you're ready to share. Yes. Thank you. Thank you for the introduction and, and thank you for inviting us to be uh, part of this uh, uh, panel today. Uh, it was really interesting to hear all the other speakers and how uh, we are all very open to collaborate. Um, that is uh, one of the best parts of um, of uh, Young Water Professionals. I believe you have access to all the other chapters. And so we're, of course, very much open uh, to collaborate with all of you. I'm going to focus my presentation uh, not so much of, on our chapter, but on the main activity that we are working on, uh, that one that takes most of our <laughs> energy right now without, uh, we still have to take care of our of our members here at home. Uh, we are, uh, so, so we also have to uh, make sure we fulfill our commitments with all of our stakeholders, but uh, I'm gonna talk about the Young Water Professionals European Conference, uh, which is, uh, the one that, that requires our most attention right now. Um, the Danish chapter is a very old chapter, I will say, uh, founded in 2014. Uh, so this year we turn 10 years old. Um, and uh, this is going to be our 10th conference. And a uh, long time ago, we decided we wanted to we wanted to try to do something larger and we wanted to uh, uh, to invite people from from all the places, and I'm so happy that it's uh, becoming a reality um, this year. Um, a little bit more about the chapter: we uh, we have uh, more than 500 members right now. Um, we have uh, uh, we have a lot of support from the industry uh, with uh, with our sponsors that support us over the years. Um, we um, that um, allows us to organize activities. We had um, past year we had twenty around twenty activities with around two hundred attendees in total, and um, um, yeah, now we are uh, working on a different challenge, and we're doing that in collaboration with uh, other chapters. I'll come that to you. So next, uh, let's start with the conference. Um, it will take place in Copenhagen. Uh, the 16th to the 19th of June starts on a Sunday evening where we are already uh, afternoon, uh, afternoon evening where we're already preparing um, super fun activities for everybody to get to know each other right before the conference. Um, we all agree um, in the team organizing the conference that one of the one of the most important things at our conference is the connections that you take with you. And that is our mission in our chapter. We want to be a connector in the water industry for young people. And we're gonna put a lot of uh, focus into that for the conference. We want to make sure that um, of course there will be also technical content and we want people to feel inspired, but above everything else, we want people to have a chance to um, get to know each other and bring connections from home. Um, yes. Um, next, the conference takes place in the building from uh, an organization called uh, Danish Industry, which is an organization that um, um, groups together 20,000 companies in Denmark um, and has a division um, focused on water, and they will be partly sponsoring the conference. It is a beautiful building right in the middle of Copenhagen. Uh, with a beautiful rooftop, and we're very, very excited that we're we're being allowed to 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 use this space. Uh, this was also possible because of our main sponsor for the conference, which is the Paul Jensen Foundation, the Grunfos Foundation. Um, we are 
uh, we're still working on finalizing uh, our sponsors and we're open to sponsorship. So if you uh, work for an organization or in contact with an organization that you think will be interested in, uh, in supporting this conference, let us know. This is the, this is the organizing committee. Uh, we have mostly people from Denmark. This would be like our local committee uh, where we are, um, where we have teams working on our on our financials and sponsorships and communication and logistics and uh, trying to find the best uh, activities for for attendees to do around uh, Copenhagen. Um, and we also have a couple of people from Sweden and Finland. And then we have our program committee. Uh, which is in charge of putting together a program, which includes people not only from Denmark, but also Sweden, Poland, Italy, uh, and Spain. And we want to make sure that the program and the content of the conference, um, of course, provides uh, people the opportunity to um, to be inspired, but by what uh, Denmark has to offer, but we also want to be very inclusive so that um, the conference will be um, appealing and interesting for um, people from all over Europe. So we want to make sure that we have uh, as many perspectives um, covered as possible. Um, yes, next, we are in the last day uh, of our submission and our call for call for content. Um, so we'll be closing that uh, tomorrow. So today is the last day for people to submit um, abstracts. We have created different types of abstracts. We're encouraging different type of uh, different type of presentations. We're gonna try that the conference is uh, maybe a little bit different than a typical technical conference, and we want to make it as uh, engaging and interactive as possible. We're super excited. We've got a very, very good response and uh, we're well over uh, 100 submissions at the moment. So we're very, very, uh, we're very, very happy. And uh, after this, we're gonna have our reviewers looking at all of the abstracts and we'll put a program together and we will be opening registration a, a month from now. So in a month, you'll be able to start registering for the conference. We uh, we have place for up to 300 people. And uh, of course, we hope uh, we will see, uh, we'll get as many people uh, to Copenhagen as possible. And uh, it will close uh, two weeks before the conference, so 1st of June. And you can follow all of this uh, in our in our communication channels, following Young Water Professional Denmark, uh, also the rest of the chapters are doing a great job by sharing also uh, from their communication channels and of course the the IWA official channels. So you can uh, stay informed that way. We're also in the events side of IWA website. And if you're not convinced yet, which I hope you will all be, and we will all be talking to. Uh, <laughs> all the people you know about this conference. Um, uh, Copenhagen is a beautiful place to visit in June. Uh, we're really putting our best effort into making this conference um, uh, an amazing experience for, for the people attending. And uh, you will not only have um, technical presentations, we also like to do a lot of soft skill development in our in our in our conferences and we'll try to have as much as uh, as much of that as we can and and of course we'll we'll try to make sure that um, the main goal which is getting people to to connect with each other there will be plenty of opportunities for that and uh, that's our website over there uh, if you want to um, have more information and otherwise you can uh, you will be will be releasing more information through all the IWA channels. And that was it for me. Uh, thank you, Nerea. I believe it was uh, this much effort what you guys putting in this event. It should be like really amazing. So good luck with that. Um, thank you. Yeah, and I think for now, I would like to suggest uh, if anyone have, sorry, any questions so we can open the floor for questions and uh, if any of participants would like to 
uh, say there's question, you are welcome to uh, open your microphone, if anyone. <laughs> I was not checking much the, the chat box, actually. Sorry, guys, I was sharing the screen. <laughs> Ludmilla was checking the, the, the chat and we don't have um, questions there, but I think that we presented a lot of information. Yeah. So that might be taking like some time to digest everything, <laughs> but we are going to be sharing this uh, presentation um, online. And then of course, if any of the participants, they have any questions, we can follow up and directly then to the speakers. Yeah, sure. Um, but I think if if the funding is quite usually a question and issue for uh, uh, young water professionals, maybe uh, chapters who have uh, uh, more experience with uh, um, being more successful in getting some grants or something like that can share their experience. I think uh, I remember Blair was uh, saying in her presentation something like that, like that. Maybe she would like to elaborate. Yes, of course. Um, from from our experience, my personal experience, our chapter's experience, uh, there are two, I would say, barriers to um, to being able to get a grant or get involved in a project. The first one would be the technical skills and also the soft skills required to apply for a grant or a project. And by that, I mean the skills to write a technical proposal, to articulate your idea, to come up with an idea that is feasible, can be implemented, and that uh, is attractive for potential investors or grant providers. And the second barrier would be, I would say sometimes the lack of experience, because as we all know, especially those who've uh, worked on the, on the private sector and have um, experience on applying for projects and grants, the more experience you have, the more references you have, the easier it is to get even more grants and projects and experiences. And that can be um, very difficult for a young chapter to overcome. So what what we would, um, let's say, recommend in cases like this is that you begin uh, your initial grants or projects could be as part of a collaboration with someone else within, with, a, with a company or maybe a, un a university or maybe even another young water professional chapter in your region or even in the same continent or otherwise, depends on the grants and the project in case. And then you can use that opportunity to gain experience and gain the necessary skills and gain the um, the knowledge from from the other more experienced partners. And you can also use their their starting capital and like their experience to be able to get said project. And then after you've gotten those skills and that experience, then you can gradually. But the goal is to apply for as many as you can, to be very active in searching out different grants and opportunities. This is very important that everyone, every member of the group gets very active in searching out grants and projects and different opportunities and scholarships. But also we as a chapter, we've benefited very much from our uh, partnership with the university and with the regional water companies, because these two um, institutions are the ones that get a lot of big investors and a lot of a lot of funding goes through these institutions and then when we have uh, collaborations with them they hit us up for the expertise or for the for the young um, professionals aspect of it so definitely collaboration developing your technical and soft skills and try to like the the idea is not to do it alone because starting starting out alone as a sole chapter is very difficult yeah, it's great. Thank you very much for such a like, full response. I believe it might help people as well. I'm, I'm just wondering, uh, I, I remember, I think Igor had some kind of experience with startup. Do you want to share any, uh, any advice on that for young professionals? Yeah, okay. Was both Pacific and contact me. I hope you can hear me clearly. Yeah, now now it's better because in the beginning it was not really good. Okay, okay. I said um, anything specific, you can reach out to me. And um, it's a very specific topic, depends on uh, what you do. Is it entrepreneurship as usual, say business as usual? And where are you in which sector? In the water sector, um, it's a little bit different than, let's say, in a, let's say, consumer business 
because usually in the water sector you work on a B2B basis, so your business to business mainly. And this requires some networking in in a, on a governmental or in a municipal municipal level. So being in the young water professionals and looking for some and and, and having the aspirations to start a startup is definitely beneficial because from from my side, for example, I already know the stakeholders and the big players in the Austrian ecosystem when it comes to water and the water network. Um, although my startup is not working in Austria, in another case, it would be super beneficial. Okay. Yeah. It's Thank a you. lot of work. If you want to start a startup, um, my general answer is don't do it. But if you really need to, then do it. It's a lot of fun. And it's a lot of something that you learn by doing. And it's a counterpart to the university. Um, also, study, finish something, and then go for a startup. Hmm. I'm sure it will be always like out of the comfort zone, right? <laughs> In case you yes, feel like something. It. Yeah, I yeah, think we true. have some. Uh, thank you. I think we have some question from Ksenia Golovko. Ksenia yeah, Golovko. hi, everyone. I hope you can hear me. Yeah, we can. Yeah. So I just had a question, maybe completely different from the startup experience, but I thought maybe it would be relevant to those who are pursuing their PhD right now. Uh, I was just having like my experience working for some very targeted summer winter schools for my uh, well postgraduates, and I found out that it might be kind of good maybe to have some page that it, on uh, young water professionals uh, website or generally in, on uh, your website that they get it for kind of up to date list of the calls for the summer winter schools because I think. Well, some some like schools are like kind of like way advertised, and maybe uh, it's easy to find them. But some are way targeted, smaller ones. It's kind of maybe scattered information, but you can't really get it that easily. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it already exists some kind of like that. But <laughs> at least, uh, yeah, I was just wondering if there is some something like that. Yes, uh, I can jump into this, Lajamila. So thank you for your question. Um, when it comes to disseminating the content from the white focus on young water professionals, we have some outlets, which are our social media and then the YWP newsletter. And of course, all the opportunities that we receive, it, they are posted on Connect Plus. So as long as you're a member and you are a young water professional, you can access this information on Connect Plus, which is our dedicated system to engage uh, members. Okay. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. Okay, I'm also uh, wondering, we've been talking about this uh, attractiveness or recognition of water sector, maybe uh, uh, our guys from other chapters can share more successful, let's say, stories, uh, how, how how to make the water sector more attractive or uh, anyone from this, the participants from the, can join? Uh, hi, Lenila. You hear me well? Yes, yes. Yeah, perfect. Well, uh, from the experience of the chapter to create or, or to be more attractive for the water sector, for the professionals, for the enterprises, uh, we thought that the idea to create activities where the water professional school step up and present projects, initiatives, innovative plans, uh, any kind of ideas that might help, first of all, to the professional, to the young water professionals, to grow in the sector, to give new perspectives from, from, from different kind of projects. Uh, for example, as we said about the hackathon, uh, the Young Water Hack that we made the last year, most of, of, of the event at the end is the how the enterprise understand how, how is the difference between the, the, real, the, the, the present problems, the present solutions, the present technologies, with the perspective of the students and the and young professionals, to make the to make solutions for the future, how to interact with the present solution, present problems, and the full problems for the future. For example, understand that the now these problems it is based on the currency part. Current, I don't know if I explain myself properly. Yeah, I think you explained properly, but you're a bit breaking. Maybe your network is breaking, so maybe. Uh... 
we can move to someone else. <laughs> yeah, I, I think that I, I have the connection. I don't know, like slowly, but but bottom line, I I'm I'm trying to explain that the water prof young water professionals currently have the opportunity to step up and present ideas that might help to the sector with the breach of the platform of young water professionals being the, the main factor that made them get involved with the solutions for present and future. I don't know. Ah, yeah. go. Yeah, I think it was quite clear. And I think Nerea has something to add to your response. <laughs> Yeah, 100% agree. I think uh, younger professionals is a great way uh, to bring visibility to the sector and to the young people in the sector. And um, recruitment and the sustainable uh, workforce of tomorrow, that's something we are actively working on and we have been interested for quite some time. Also, the Danish water sector is very interested and I think that's why they saw the value in young water professionals um, and and have been supporting us. Um, so I think related to, I wanted to answer also the other question with getting the sponsorships, I think. Um, I think it helps to, you know, self-reflect on what your value is and be very clear about the value that you provide to, to the sponsor. So it's not a one way. Uh, we do, uh, so very good at branding, brand yourself professionally and, and be sure that you uh, that you show them that you actually bring a lot of value to the sector. Um, and then I was gonna comment on, um, I think it was Jacob that was talking about uh, these questionnaire and how people that work in the water sector do not consider salaries very important. And that is also what we find out here when we do these uh, questionnaires and we talk to the young people in the sector. And uh, so I think it's very clear to me that we are very good at get, getting the passion driven uh, people into the sector. And uh, if that's not enough, uh, then maybe we should be looking at uh, how do we get the other people that uh, maybe care a little bit more about um, uh, not just passion, but also working conditions, maybe. Yeah, I think uh, maybe not only professional, but uh, like other social things is quite important. So it should be taken into account. And I can see Maria having her hand up. Hi. So, um, yes, I just wanted to add in terms of uh, passion, I completely agree. We do have a lot of passion. All people involved in the water sector usually do it because they love it, not because of the money. However, um, I think exposure is a big one that we need to consider. Uh, at least at um, our universities, um, people usually stumble across uh, into the water sector rather than um, choosing a career from a young age. So exposure from different levels, from primary school, moving up to university level, I think is very important to stop the aging population in the workforce of the water sector, but also um, uh, it's an niche environment. So you require to um, bring it to people's attention in order to spark that enthusiasm that I'm sure we all have. Yes, for sure. It should be like a complex question. It's not like the, the, the thing of one year or like one uh let's say uh, one part of the professionals but yeah if it will be incorporated from the beginning to elder that will be great um yes i think i will we will try to share some more information about upcoming um events and we also have one of the sorry i think my slides is not sharing right one of the upcoming uh, event what we will have very soon will be also Young Water Professionals Benelux, what uh, will be in the beginning of the June. And there will be also a big event like uh, World Water Congress and Exhibition for which the registration is currently open. So we are also uh, inviting you to register and participate actively. Uh, for those who are not yet member, you can get a uh, 20% discount uh, and become a member and uh, uh, use all of the benefits and opportunities of uh, improving your knowledge, skills and network as well. 
And uh, of course, I would like to thank all of the uh, our speakers for their time, for their efforts, and for their uh, efforts, even though before years that they you, you, you've been trying to encourage and to engage young water professionals uh, of our generation and uh, future one. And also for all of the participants who also join us and are curious of getting to know more about uh, young water professionals and the opportunities, what it can uh, give us. Yes, thank you very much. I don't know if Isabella would like to add anything. Um, I just want to make uh, some comments because I was saying in the chat. So um, when it comes to meetings only with chapters, we have the global coordination call and we organize it, it one per semester. So yes, we are hosting one this semester. And regarding updates about the countries chapters, as long as they keep us the headquarters updated, so they send us information about what they are doing and they submit the uh, annual report, then we can definitely work on more newsletters. Yeah. But that's right. it. Everything, that's all from my side. And if you have any other questions, please feel free to reach out to me. And from my side, thank you for all the speakers and participants and special thanks to Lajamila who coordinated uh, and led this event. Yeah, thank you everyone. And I'm happy always to organize and participate. <laughs>